almost five years ago, began the investigation into one of the city's most horrendous series of crimes. Investigators began digging up the bodies of 11 women and a fetus on the city's west side. Hi, so uh, you saw the title, you know this video is about, but before we start, I just want to say this is actually my first video on this account. I um, uh, have an introduction before this, but this is my first like, you know, actual video on this account. So if you like it, if you don't, let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, anything helps right now. I have three subs, so like, <laughs> anything helps. Shit, I just knocked over something. Alright, but yeah, anything helps, Um, and yeah, let's get into the video. The Paraquat murders were poisonings that were carried out throughout Japan in 1985. It was very hard for any evidence to be made from these events outside of the poisonings coming from poison drinks and vending machines, which is why they're also known as a vending machine killer. The first occurrence of this was in Fukuyama Hiroshima on April 30th, 1985, and after that, 11 more deaths happened between September 11th and November 17th, along with 35 others that were injured. Guess he just realized he got away with it and decided to go fuck on him and lace every vending machine he saw for two months. Or not, we don't know, it's still active for a reason. The whole situation is very weird. Basically in 1985, the Suka Pharmaceutical Company was trying to promote a health drink called Oro Namen C. I think I pronounced that right, but I'm not sure. And the way of promoting it was to dispense a free bottle of it with whatever you bought from the vending machine. So if you bought a Coke, you also get a free bottle of this with it. Which is cool, but a lot of people just didn't want it, so they leave the drink there next to the vending machine or on top of the vending machine for anyone who wanted a free drink, which is a kind of normal thing to do in Japan at this time. But because these drinks were so out in the open, there was someone going around lacing them with very dangerous weed killers, which caused the 11 killings in 2 months. Since the guy was never caught and the crime is almost impossible to trace, there's been a good amount of copycat killers after this one, not even sure how much because of how hard it is to trace them. My real question with this is what the motives were. I get the copycat killers, they just wanted to, you know, get the attention and the infamy the first guy got and after they realized how easy it was to do. But um I, I don't see the point in you know doing it the first time. Did they just hate maybe they thought homeless people were gonna take them, so they thought, yeah, this is I, I don't like homeless people. I don't, I don't know. I wasn't the one doing it, so I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's been 35 years, so the odds of them being found now is very small, but the case is still active. Pedro Alonso Lopez was born and raised in Santa Isabel, Colombia. His dad was a politician who was killed when he was young, and he was the 7th child among 13 siblings. His mother was a sex worker and he didn't have too much money growing up. When he was a teen, he was reportedly kicked out of his house for doing stuff with his younger sister. Yeah, it gets worse from here. He eventually traveled to Bogota, Colombia where he was homeless and he became one of a group of homeless children known as the Gammons. While on the streets, he was sexually assaulted and had a you know, pretty fucked up time. It wasn't that good for him. He then was taken off the street and brought into the home of an elderly couple who enrolled him in a school where he was sexually assaulted again by a teacher, which caused him to run off again. There's a lot that's happened to him in his childhood that may make a whole video on its own about him, but I'm just going to skip to the reason why he's on this list. When Pedro was either 18 or 21, he, reports don't fully say which one, he was arrested for stealing a car and while in prison he was taken advantage of by two guys and while that was happening he pulled out a makeshift knife and killed both of them, which was the first of many killings of his. When he got out of prison he basically went immediately to work, he started hunting down young girls so he could you know, do stuff to them and then kill them. While he was doing that, he was caught trying to lure a 9 year old girl and was deported back to Columbia which was probably better for him because you know they didn't really do anything with the crimes he was doing while there so he kind of had a fresh start to do his sick ish in Columbia. He did the murders up until the 80s, basically spending most of his life just killing women until he was caught in 1981. He was charged with 110 murders, yeah and possibly responsible for over 200 since he you know, traveled around a lot and yeah, 
Even though he killed that many women, he only served 16 years in prison, which is insane to me. I looked into this and I'm still very confused by that. Well, he got out after 14 years for good behavior and was deported back to Columbia once again. The police tried to convict him for murders he did two whole decades before, but he was basically declared insane and was put into a psychiatric facility for three years. He was released in 1998 and has basically gone missing. Nobody knows where he is, but he was thought to be connected to a murder in 2002. So he may still be around, maybe not. Who knows? If you see him on the street, make sure you give him a nice friendly hello and a hug. He's very nice, I promise. Almost five years ago began the investigation into one of the city's most horrendous series of crimes. The West Mesa murders were murders that took place between 2001 and 2005. In 2009, 11 women's remains were found buried in the desert of West Mesa of Albuquerque, New Mexico. The victims were sex workers by the names of, I'm pretty bad with names, so I'm sorry if I butcher any of these, Jamie Barilla, Monica Candeloria, Victoria Chavez, Virginia Cloven, Silenia Edwards, Cinnamon Elks, Doreen Marquez, Julie Niado, Victoria Romura, Evelyn Salazar, and Michelle Valdez. The victims range between ages of 15 and 32, one being pregnant at the time of her death. Outside the 11 victims, there was also 7 that were just not identified. They had suspects over the years, but no one was actually arrested. The first suspect they had was Fred Reynolds, who apparently knew some of the women and had some photos of them. But outside of that, that's basically it. He died the same year, so even if it was him, they couldn't really do anything. The next one was Lorenzo Montoya, who lived very close to the area they were buried. Less than three miles to be exact. And the thing with him was, he was found strangling a teenager in his trailer before being shot by a teenager's boyfriend. And after he died, the murders happened to stop. There's so much people that are connected to this, I can't really fit it all in this one video. But one guy most people believe to be the killer would be Joseph Blee. He was a suspect in 2014 and at this point he was known as the mid-school risk because of stuff he did in the 80s which by the name I think you can kind of put together what he did. Basically broke into homes and did stuff to 13 and 15 year olds who lived close to the McKinley Middle School. What well, reason he was connected was because his DNA was found next to another sex worker that was killed in 2015 and a tag from a nursery he frequented was found next to the West Mesa victims. He got arrested for the stuff he did in the 80s, but never this stuff. He was only a suspect for these murders. The case is still very much open. Now this one's one of the more known ones on the list. It's kind of been talked about a lot more than the others, but basically with the smiley face killers, 45 drunk male college students in the span of 20 years all drowned, spreading across 11 different states. Now the reason a lot of people think this is all one person, or a group of people, was because of the fact that every drowning has smiley face spray painted very close to it. Basically just thinking there's a group of killers going around attacking primarily drunk male college students. Now I'm not going to talk about this one much just because in my opinion I think it's kind of bullish. A lot of the smiley faces were painted sometimes years before the killing. Also it's smiley faces. It's literally the most popular thing to spray paint. Also it was drunk college students. I wouldn't be shocked if they just happened to slip in the water or something. Or at least if someone did push them, I doubt they're connected. Or at least connected to the fucking smiley faces on the walls. I don't know, I'm just going to move on to the last one. Skid Row Stabber is the name of an unidentified serial killer who killed 11 people in the neighborhood of Skid Row in California in 1978, which is how he got his name. The neighborhood is known for being full of homeless people, which is probably why he picked this neighborhood specifically, all of the victims being homeless. The first victim was Jesse Martinez, who was 50, and went all the way to his last victim, Luis Alvarez, who was 26. All happening in the span of only 3 months, and he dumped their bodies all in the alleyways close to where he killed them. Even though he did this all so close to each other, all in the same pretty wealthy area of the city, they still hadn't found much witnesses and the killer's still unknown. The only witnesses found were for the killing of David Jones, which was one of the victims. They claimed that they were friends with David and spoke to the killer moments before the murder. 
They claimed the male was a 30-year-old black man who spoke in a strong Puerto Rican accent and was named Luther. The first suspect was Bobby Joe Maxwell, whose palm print was found very close to one of the victim's bodies. He was imprisoned back in Tennessee before being released in 1977 and moving to Los Angeles soon after, being known for hanging around the Skid Row area. Another reason he was suspected was he was found showing deviant behavior against sleeping homeless people. A knife was seized from him during his arrest and the knife was known as the killer's main weapon. People basically assumed he was the killer until while he was in jail, the killer committed one last murder, basically proving it wasn't him and he was let go. Even though he was let out, there really wasn't much proof to think it was him. Everyone in the public thought he was a Skid Row killer though. The trial went on for decades and there were other suspects, but Maxwell was like the main guy they were looking at. The charges lasted until the end of his life. He fell into a coma in 2017 and in August 2018 the charges were dropped. Maxwell died soon after in 2019. To this day, nobody fully knows who the killer is and the case is still ongoing. I highly doubt there would be anything else on it in the future. The dude got away with it, even if it was Maxwell. He was on trial most of his life, but he was never found guilty, so... Yeah, the case is definitely done, but who knows. Alright, well that's it for this video. This is my first actual video on this channel, so I'm still working out some stuff, but I hope y'all enjoyed it either way. Hope all three of my subs enjoyed it. <laughs> Um, and if y'all want anything for a video in the future, let me know in the comments. And yeah, uh, I'm bad with outros. See ya.